Welcome to the Desire to Dream podcast. I'm your host, Lo Wilder. The vision of this podcast is to provide tools on how to become successful in your finances, business, leadership development, and much more. A little bit about me, I grew up in the hood, homeless at the age of 14. I made a choice not to become a product of my environment. And today, I am a successful businessman, community leader, and inspirational speaker. It is my desire to encourage and empower you to unlock your greatness. So tune in and enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of the Desire to Dream podcast. And today, I have the one and only Super Bowl champion, uh, Marcus Dixon, a former Hamptonian, a brother of mine, so we came into Hampton in 2004. You know, now he's doing amazing things. He's a husband. Uh, he's a father to two beautiful girls um, and just got another uh, promotion out in Denver, with the Denver Broncos, man. So, Marcus, what's happening, bro? Lauren, what's up, my guy? How you doing, man? Man, I'm living, man. I'm living. I'm listen. I was rooting for you, bro. You know, you know, I'm a Giants fan, right? But <laughs> <laughs> I had to look out for the cat, man. And not only that, bro, just got to say on, for the record, Aaron Donald is by far my favorite NFL player. Um, I'm sure you had a, a, a great experience working with him, huh? Oh, man, that guy is, uh, I tell people all the time, he is a creative human being. <laughs> like you see the creative player the stuff he right. does but this man is like an awesome teammate an awesome father mm. a husband like the man is just a created human being that's awesome that's amazing he's, man he's truly he's truly one of one like coach mcveigh always called a one of one one of he one. really is he's right one of one yeah yeah well he's definitely number 99 is definitely one of my favorite players to watch man his work ethic is amazing and you know and speaking of work ethic you know i think about you when uh we go back to 04 05 man with the joe taylor days coach joe t and um you mm -hmm. know just putting in work man you you was always one of them guys that came in and put in the work and the grind so you know kind of tell uh everyone who, who may not know your you know who you are um and your journey we're going to get into how you made it to the nfl and, and now you're coaching but just the work ethic the work you had to put in at, at Hampton coming from a division one double a school um you know a lot of people don't really come out but you know we had some studs that came out in in that class I think it was really uh honestly it was it was easy just because of the guys we had around us mm. at Hampton you know we mm. had a bunch of guys that just really wanted to work uh we had limited resources compared to other schools that had the different different cleats different uniforms right. different you know what I'm saying so we kind of was like you know what forget it we better get it out the mud Mm. So going to work every day in college with those with those teammates like yourself and the JDs, the Kendall Langfords, the Vernon Bryans, the Nevin McCaskills, you know, guys are just that just want to grind right. and, and make a way. So we're just constantly competing. So ultimately, we all this became the best that would yeah. come through Hampton because sure. of that. So <laughs> it was just it was it was a fun grind, you know, because everybody was like minded and wanted the same goals. Right. No, for sure, man. It was definitely a special group of gentlemen, man, that was there. Um, I, I just remember uh, Nevin always stood out to me, man, that freshman year. And, uh, you know, just to, like you said, the work ethic, you had Jelani, you know, Autumn Cats, man. They, and then not only that, just the, the football IQ, right? The guys that was really like putting in work, watching film, that really was something else that I've never seen before um, and, and definitely had to, had to put – uh, a little extra work in there. Um, I remember getting what well, we had like one t-shirt, <laughs> yeah, one, uh, one shirt, you know what I mean? It was just, it was wild, man. But tell me about your, your journey. Like as far as going to NFL, was that always something, I mean, we didn't talk about it that much at Hampton, you know, we were focusing school and, and playing on the field, but was that always the goal? Like, man, I want to, you know, play in the NFL. Cause I know it's everybody's dream. Whoever played football, I'm sure it was yours. Right. No doubt. No, mine growing up was really I wanted to be an MLB player. Like baseball is okay. my first love. Wow. Uh, and it's going through. And I guess my my size kind of grew the whole baseball thing. <laughs> so I realized my, my right. golden ticket was football. So and I've always had that attitude. If I'm in it, I'm in it. Mm. And I want to get to the highest level wherever I'm at and whatever I'm doing. So, you know, going to the NFL is something I wanted to do and got to Hampton and saw the success, saw the, knew the history of, of Hamptonians going to the NFL. So I'm mm. like, all right, it's a possibility. Right. Um, but no, that was always something I wanted to do. And it's funny thing is, when I went back to Hampton to coach uh, Miss Winston, she was still there. Wow. And she Ms. actually <laughs> brought, yeah, man, she actually <laughs> brought me my my uh, my paperwork, and I filled it out my senior year, saying, 
Like my goal was to go to the NFL. Wow. And then once I'm done, I come back and coach. And it was just crazy how it all came back full circle. It's so. all full circle. Man, that is yeah. amazing. So so when you got to Hampton, like um, when you ended up coaching at Hampton, you know, was it a connection there? Obviously, being a former player, was it an easy plug in? No, it was definitely uh, one of the situations with Coach Maynard. Uh, I'm very thankful and grateful for, you know, allowing me to come into his program because, you know, it's hard. You know, you, you, you want to be around guys that you trust. You know, I'm a guy that Dr. Harvey was really the one that kind of threw me on the team, honestly. Wow. And so I can kind of, you know, that makes the head coach nervous. Like, why is this guy? <laughs> right. I didn't hire this guy. It is what it is. But he, he welcomed me with open arms and I had to prove prove myself and prove that I am a, you know, trustworthy guy and a loyal guy. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, by the end of the season, he realized, like, man, this guy that wants to come in and pour into the kids and win. Right. And to this day, I can still call Coach Maynard and, and everything. So. Yeah, that's, um, that's wonderful, man. Yeah, man, that was definitely a blessing. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, this this podcast is is called The Desire to Dream. It's for individuals who who are dreamers, uh, people who want to turn their dream into a reality. So I'm bringing individuals like yourself and others who who are achievers, people who was able to accomplish that. What are some tips that you can give someone, you know, that just in general, right, in life, you know, someone who's just back against the wall, you know, and it's like, I, if I can do these things, take these action steps, you know, I can turn my dream into a reality. My biggest thing is, uh, that's one of the things actually in my office, in my office, I got a picture of a, a little cat looking into a puddle and mm. seeing a big lion. Um, and the big thing behind that is just like, it's your mindset. You know, whatever you with your mindset, what are you putting into your mind, whatever you're writing down, writing those goals down, they eventually become reality. Mm. And it's the funny thing is the biggest thing that we're preaching in NFL now is practice plus preparation equals game reality. Like it's it's, it's just a mindset. You know, you got to change your mindset every morning. It's not it's, it can't be a oh it's Tuesday. No, oh yeah, it's Tuesday. Time for me to get better. Mm. Oh yeah, it's Wednesday. No, it's time for me to get better. It's time for me to make put the put those uh, foot to, feet to the ground and take those steps towards that goal that I've written down for myself, whatever right. it may be, whatever mm -hmm. it, may, it may be. Um, just making sure that I'm, I'm aligning myself every single day to get towards that goal. And is it easy? It's not easy. I mean, I'm still working. I still got goals that I want to get to. Right. Um, and then like and and celebrate those little wins too like i've heard this before like celebrate those little wins along the journey because it just makes you that much hungry to continue to get those wins like oh that's, that felt great right now i want another one you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's not about being greedy it's just you want more for yourself you want more for your family and that's just that's how i approach every day man yeah that's that's great man i think about that because for me uh and you know a little bit about my story too um just coming up uh, I never really defined success. And so it wasn't until my mid thirties, man, just a few years ago when I was in therapy and they were like, man, you need to like really reflect on mm -hmm. your success. And that was something I didn't do. And, and, you know, I was just always chasing, chasing the next thing, the next thing, never really appreciating, you know, those moments. And so that's, that's key, man, what you just said, you know, self-reflection is, is major uh, in development and growing, you know, for sure. So a little bit about uh, your story, right? You go undrafted to the Dallas Cowboys and I know it's your favorite team, you know, because <laughs> we used to yeah, go man. at it all the time, right? Giant. Yeah. So you get undrafted, right? From your, yeah. <laughs> your favorite team. And I just remember you talking about, you know, going to the locker room and seeing M Dixon on the locker, you know, with mm -hmm. your number, your Jersey. I mean, what was that moment? Like, I mean, first off you're undrafted. So, you know, you got put in the work, but were you mm -hmm. able to reflect at that moment and say, wow, I'm in the NFL. No, I definitely, when I got on the phone call at the end of the draft and I had to ask him like twice, so you telling me right now I'm a cowboy. <laughs> like, you know, when you, right. you know that's your favorite team and you get picked up, you're already frustrated because of the draft. You didn't get right. drafted. Right. But then you kind of, like you said, you self-reflect and go back like, man, look at the opportunity I have. Mm. Like there's, there's a, a lot of guys came out when I came out in 08 that didn't even have a chance to do that. Right. So, you know, you kind of uh, – you realize with the Cowboys, but then walking into that locker room was just so surreal. Mm. I mean, you got, I got the big star on the helmet. I see my name. I got a jersey number. Like, it's not like I'm coming to visit. Like, I have <laughs> right. a jersey, a helmet. I have cleats. There's the Man. Marcus Ware. There's Leonard Floyd. I mean, I mean, not Leonard Floyd, excuse me, Leonard Davis. Right. There's Mark Colombo. There's freaking Romo in there. Greg Ellis. Right, like, right. All Man, play with guys. some legends, bro. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> T.O.'s in here. Like, I'm in the locker room. 
I'm right. a part of this team right now. Like it, it was surreal, man. Man, yeah, I, I can only imagine. What was that work ethic by you? Like you're 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 a competitor, man, but you're very humble, man. That's one of the beautiful things I loved about you, Marcus, man. Like coming to Hampton, man, you was always humble. You started freshman year, you were balling out, you and Kendall, but y'all were always humble. But that work ethic, you know, so mm. you get undrafted, right? back against the wall so speak to those that are probably in that situation where they they may not get that promotion they're being overlooked um or they you know they're starting their business and no one's showing up but what what does it take to develop that work ethic to say you know what my back's against the wall but by any means necessary i need to make this happen i think the biggest thing and for me is just going back to when i was locked up and mm. when you realize that things can be taken away from you at any given any given moment that it, it allows you not to take any day, any minute, any hour, whatever it is for granted. Right. And I right. think that was the biggest thing for me and for Kendall when we was coming out, like, you know, he was headed to UVA mm. and we ended up at Hampton. Right. Like those little things be taken away. So to where like you take, you, you don't take it for granted now. Man. So if I'm allowed to wake up every day and I'm going back to 08 as a rookie, I'm allowed to wake up and I'm a freaking Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> I cannot take this for granted. So that means I got to put my best foot forward because at the end of the day, if it doesn't work out, I know I gave it everything I had. Right. And by the grace of God, it, it worked out. Man, that's beautiful, man. Man, that's, that's amazing, you know, testimony. And you had the opportunity to play with other teams. Tell me, uh, what was the, one of your, your proudest moments, you know? Because um, I know you, you was putting in some work with the Jets, bro. I was like, look at my dog out there, man, just <laughs> doing doing some work, man. He was working out there in New York. Um, you had a lot more opportunities there, obviously. But what is what is probably your proudest moment being in the NFL? Uh, as a player? Yeah, as a player. Yeah, we're going to get to uh, the coach because I already know that. <laughs> I, already, yeah, for real. I already know uh, what that is. We're going to get into I, that. I, I would say as a player was probably uh, the individual part for, you know, for me, it was getting my first sack. Right. I mean, that was pretty cool. Jay Cutler, 10-yard loss at Soldier <laughs> Field. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that was that was pretty cool. I mean, it yeah, was I got, yeah. a, I got a sack in the NFL. Man. Um, but I think like as far as a, a team thing um, was when I was with the Cowboys and we we won the East, mm -hmm. NFC East and, and went to the playoffs. So they would experience the playoffs for the first time. It's like now you tasted it right. and you always want it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think that was probably one of my moments I always remember. And then as we went to the Jets and making it all the way to the ASU championship game. Well, Mark, Mark losing, Sanchez was the quarterback, right? Yeah, he's a quarterback, man. Right, losing right. the Pittsburgh. Uh, by five points. Was and that was that the year? Was that the year that Pittsburgh won? Um, or they played in the Super Bowl against the Packers, right? Against the Packers, and That's guess right. what was that? It was played in Dallas. <laughs> man, That's what about full, speaking about full circle, man? If you would have full made circle, it. man. So oh, man. five points, man. So that's something I did. But that whole journey, that whole experience, that locker room, that team, man, like mm. uh, it was it was amazing. Yeah. It was definitely amazing, man. So that was uh some of my proudest moments and. Some things I'll just never forget as a yeah. player. Man, that's awesome. And then what about Hampton, man? What's some of the proudest moments? Because I remember one oh, one man. game, boy, boy took the ball, took it to the end zone, man. I was like, ooh. Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when my dog, when my dog Kendall scored that touchdown, bro. That was uh, you know, when you when you just see somebody that you just know grinds yeah. every day. Right. Like really the whole mindset, the whole thing when they say get it out the mud. Like mm -hmm. my dog got it out the mud. Man. And you see him running out of, down the sideline. Not just once though. That's A and T, and then we talking about that uh dog on uh South Carolina State. South Carolina State, yeah, yeah. Like when you see that, like it just makes you proud, man. Yeah, like, for sure, because you know the work that's been put in. But absolutely, uh, yeah, it's the 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 MIAT championships, mm -hmm. the sophomore year going undefeated. Yeah, uh, I mean it was that was a, an amazing journey with a bunch of amazing men. Mm -hmm, uh, for sure. That you just you'll never forget, man. Like we're we're all locked in as a family forever. Oh yeah, for sure, man. DNA, you know, uh those DNA, don't know man. DNA yeah. forever, man. So we, we came yeah. in together, man, and uh it's wonderful. I, I love seeing, you know, all the success and obviously the NFL, man, what a journey. I mean, six mm -hmm. years uh in the NFL it don't matter, right? Like you you always have the ability to say, you know, I played in the NFL. You can tell your kids, your grandkids, like I made it to the league and and be able to share them stories. Oh yeah, no, that's definitely a blessing, man. That's for sure. I mean, because yeah, it's uh it's a lot of great people out there that didn't get get a chance to play, but rightfully so could have could have did a great job in the NFL. Right. So 
Yeah, man. So you talked about a little bit, you know, you got into your career, uh, coaching career. So how did the uh, Los Angeles Rams opportunity come up? Was it a connection you had or, you know, you was just just applied for it? I mean, I don't even know how that works. So this year, man, I could, you probably wouldn't believe if I told you. So for uh, for the Rams job, I got to go back a few years. So OK, I'm working. I'm working at Hampton. We're going to go back before that. So 2014 is uh, really my last year in the NFL. And I'm with the Tennessee Titans, and my D-line coach is Giff Smith. Mm. Uh, got real close with, uh, with Giff, great coach, great great mentor, great guy. Just wants to help everybody he can. Uh, unfortunately, I got cut that year, had some injuries. So right. I retired that uh, right after that season. I went to the BC Lions. I signed a two-year deal in 2015. Me and my fiance at the time, uh, Tisa, were mm-hmm. pregnant. Mm. And the Cowboys called and asked, you know, but I always signed up for the Bill Walsh minority internship. So this time I was actually getting picked by wow. the Dallas Cowboys. So uh talked to her and was like, all right, babe, you know, got an opportunity to start this coaching journey. You know, are you ready? You, you want to go and retire? And, you know, we got the baby on the way. So we both right. agreed. Let's let's do it. So uh did the internship. This is 2015. Uh, after the internship, talked to Coach Garrett. And he was like, you need to get involved with the program. And I get it. You know, you need, you need to start your coaching. You got to start somewhere, right? Exactly. So that's 2015. I went to coach at a high school back in my area in 2016. And that's how I ended up at Hampton mm. in 2017. So uh, coach there 2017, 2018, I did the Bill Watch thing again. This time it's with the uh, Chargers, who now the D-line coach is Giff Smith. Gotcha. Who coached me in 2014. His assistant D-line coach was Eric Henderson okay. at the time. So I went in. I met these guys. Uh, it was only two days. My my head coach at the time in Hampton, Robert Pruny, I was supposed to stay for a week. He made me stay. He only let me stay for two days. Mm. So I'm already pissed off about this whole thing. <laughs> right. So remember yeah, remember that. Part. I'm pissed. I'm pissed <laughs> off. Like, right. you you talking about my my career. Like, this is a this is a like a opportunity that you just can't pass up. Right. And you making me come back after, after two days? Like, really? To what well, we didn't do nothing for a whole week, but that's what up. Right. So remember that part. I'm pissed off. Mm-hmm. All right. So I come back. Uh, Eric Henderson gets the job with the L.A. Rams. Mm-hmm. We connected in those two days. I, I did some projects for him, showed him I, I want to work. This is what I want to do. So uh, we connected, stayed in contact with each other. He gets the D-line job with the Rams in 2019. Uh, I was called in to do an interview for the charges for his spot. Um, and I didn't get it. They gave it to Leroy Gover and, and the head coach at the time, A. Lynn, told me just like this, like, hey, I've been knowing this guy longer. Mm. He did an amazing job. I'm hiring him. You did nothing wrong. Right. Cool. I appreciate you telling me that. I mean, I, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, it means right. something, but at the same time, you're kind of like, mm. no. Yeah, like, I'm still like, because you know you want it. You know what right, I mean? Like, right. You want it so bad. All right, so but still in contact with all these guys, you know, Eric Henderson, Gil Smith. All right, now I got other people, Gus Bradley, that I'm talking to. So 2020 comes around. Uh, I'm at this time, I'm not coaching more. I, okay. I'm, I'm selling cars. Right, right. I, I saw I that. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah, I'm, I'm selling cars. I got to do what I got to feed my family. Right. Um, so I did the internship again, but this time with the Rams because mm. of my connections with Eric Henderson. Um, so I did that just for a week and this, I, you know, was there doing the meetings and, and, and whatnot. I'm actually doing this in the back of the car dealership through these classes, the meetings and everything. And I go back to the showroom to sell cars. Wow. So February, 2021 comes around and uh, Eric was like, man, I think this will be the year, bro. I, th- I think this is going to make some, make some uh, moves, move some pieces, be ready, probably gonna get an interview. And sure enough, I got an interview. Wow. Um, so get on Zoom. It's supposed to be a two-part interview uh, where you, you know, basically like an hour and a half through Zoom. It's kind of getting to know you, talk ball, and then they fly you out. And you kind for of that go second through interview? Drills. Yeah, mm-hmm. for the second interview. Now it's face-to-face. Show me what you can do in the field. You know, that type of thing. Right. Uh, it was 30, 30 plus minutes, 34, 35 minutes. Took a break, came back, and I got hired on the spot. Wow. To be, to be <laughs> line, coach. Man, praise God, man. Praise wow. God, bro. But to, to say that is like, Gil Smith in 2014. Right. This is a guy that has been pouring into me ever since then. Got me the internship. Introduced me to Eric Henderson. Right. I'm only out there two days, Lauren. I'm pissed right. off. <laughs> right. I'm pissed off. But 
that's when we we have plans and we do all this and, and we like, man, why? Like, why? Why, right. But not understanding God has a bigger plan. That's it, man. It was meant for me to go for two days and make that connection with Eric Henderson. And that's why I'm at where I'm at now, bro. Man, man, look at God, man. I mean, it's just <laughs> his plan, his plan is perfect, right? I mean, it may bro. not look well, it may not look perfect for us, but it's like, wow. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's amazing. So when I tell people, they be like, man, what? And I know it's kind of <laughs> long, but you got to hear everything with that, bro. Yeah, like those nah, that's serious, man. Like, it's like, it couldn't be this story. That's why I say this story was written a long time ago. Right. And it's and ain't that, nothing yeah. about me. It is. It ain't nothing about me, man. Right. It's all with God's door. Yeah, for sure, man. And I and I, I love that about you too, man. By the way, you know, you're always giving God his glory, giving him praise, man. That's just a beautiful thing. So yeah. let's just get right into that piece, right? Like you get to the mm -hmm. Rams and, mm -hmm. and you're coaching. And it's like, what's this journey like? You know, you had you had just a Cinderella story, right? You know, you get mm -hmm. into training camp because this is your first year coaching with the Rams. Yes. And so your your first year coaching, you got Aaron down in the locker room, amazing defensive line. You know, talk about that journey and and all the way up and leading to the Super Bowl. So with that journey there, we already know about the interview part and how that happened and just was unreal, man. I I mean, I cried like a baby when Sean <laughs> told me I was being hired. You know what I mean? Right. I couldn't hold back, but so I walk into the building February 17, 2021 as a 6 and D line coach and just kind of going through the journey of it, the whole process and, you know, understanding like, you know, ball, but right. you realize like, I don't know everything. And I still, I've still got that mindset. I don't know everything. I still mm -hmm. want to keep learning. And I mean, you get there and it's just the, the attention to detail, um, highlights it everything's being coached everything is coached and that's one of the, the biggest things that I learned in the whole process but going through that OTAs training camp uh just a great team great coaching staff everybody wants to win everybody wants to enjoy family um it's just one of them things that you just it was like I said the story's been written a long time ago right so you go through this whole journey you go through the season long season uh then you go through the playoffs and and you, you know, the ultimate goal, man, you, you go to the freaking Super Bowl and, and <laughs> win. win it, win it, <laughs> which is a hey, classic, man. I'm like, bro, man, 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 the whole time I'm like, man, my bro got to win it. He got to win it. And I was oh, just watching it from, from over here, man. It was just amazing to see, man, and watching your wife and the kids celebrating on the field with the confetti, see you in the locker room, man. I was just so happy. It was like, I won the Super Bowl, man. Just, you know, just cause I, I'm connected with you. <laughs> yeah, man. No, that was, uh, that's that's a journey. I actually bought the CD. That oh, had wow. oh runs. man! Was, and you know, you always saw those on TV. Uh, right, right. The Super Bowl runs, but yeah, it's your like team just won the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. Like, so <laughs> right. We watched. We watched it as a family. Me and my wife and two wow. girls, and we just yeah. kind of was just like reflecting, like, wow, man, like look what the Lord brought us. Like right. we. We were there. We're not just watching this to watch it. Like we're there. You got to experience that, man. Yeah, that's man. beautiful. It's, uh, it's a blessing, man. Yeah. So two things before we go, man. One, you know, the promotion, uh, where you at now. And then the last mm -hmm. thing, um, you know, if there was something that you can share with somebody that's going through it or they're trying to, you know, get over the hump and turn their dream to reality. What's that one piece of advice? If you can sum it up into one, you can use multiple. Um, but what is that one thing that, you know, to help someone overcome and, and achieve that goal? So uh, where you at now, the promotion and then and then that piece. You know what I told you, I walked into the Rams February 17, 2021, uh, whole season. We all know they ended Super Bowl run, Super Bowl champs. And then February 17, 2022, I walked into the Denver Broncos as a new D-line coach. Man. So I'm literally on. one one year later. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> man, look at God, look man. Well, hey. Look at God, man. No, so I'm the, I'm the D-line coach in Denver, man. Great, great organization, great staff. Some great men I'm able to work with, man. And uh, and I was able to actually bring in, too, um, the assistant D-line coach that we coached together at Hampton. Wow. Andrew Carter. So <laughs> wow. he's the assistant D-line coach, man. So uh, yeah. it's just a blessing, man. It's definitely a blessing. But my biggest thing is, like, whatever you're going through, just don't give up. Just don't give up. As is, is, is tough as it may be, even as good as it is, mm. give up, man. Like, yeah. if you got a goal, you wrote it down, it's what you want to do, continue to strive for that goal. And whatever happens, do not give up. That's good, man. That's the biggest thing, man. man. Stay, faith, stay prayed up, stay faithful, man. Don't give up. That's it. Keep pushing. That's what it is, Keep man. Pushing. Well, listen, bro, I, 
I appreciate your time, man. I know you're settling in uh, in Denver, man. And you got Russell Wilson and all them boys over there. That team's looking <laughs> looking crazy. And I won't be surprised, man, if you if you're making another run at it, man. I wish you, you know, and the, and the family best of luck and the team. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, again, appreciate your time, man. So there you have it, everybody. Thanks for listening to the episode of the Desire to Dream uh, podcast. I'm your host, Lo Wilder. And today I have my brother, Marcus Dixon, Super Bowl champion, Marcus Dixon. Uh, he's a defensive line coach with the Denver Broncos. My fellow Hamptonian, appreciate you all. Share it, like it, and uh, God bless everybody. Take care. God bless you, bro.